Hello listeners and welcome back to the EdTech podcast. This is the first episode recorded in 2019 and we wish you a happy and healthy new year wherever you may be listening in. This week's episode is all about Finland. It was recorded at the rather wonderful 100 Summit held in Helsinki. 100.org researches innovations in K-12 education from around the world and selects 100 inspiring innovations every year in the hope of scaling innovations which really have an impact. This week's episode chats to those in Helsinki, whilst next week we dive into some of the selected innovations. Those of you listening in will be familiar with Finland's success story in education. The focus on digital skills and edtech is more recent, with interesting approaches such as that led by Nico Lindholm at the Innovation Unit at the city of Helsinki and Antti Korhonen at XEDU. To kick us off, let's listen in to this short clip from a speech by the Finnish Minister of Education, Sanni Gran Lassanen. Uh, just a couple of ideas. I think it's not a com- coincidence that a hundred comes from Finland or that this event takes place in Helsinki. Because uh, Finland and Finnish people very much love and respect education. That's something that it's very in the heart of Finnish uh, society. And in our hundred years of uh, independence, we've counted on education as our greatest resource. And when we wrote our government's program three years, three and a half years ago, we wrote that we want Finland to be a country where everyone loves to learn new things all the time. We want Finland to be a modern country that is also the model country for modern learning. And this event is a great opportunity for us to also learn from other countries and not innovations like all around the world. And that's why I'm so proud of the work Hamrad does. Uh, Finland's education system is built around one core value, which is equal access to quality education. We want that each children, like each each child, each individual may reach their full potential, no matter uh, their background or their place of birth. We want, want every school to be uh, a place of world-class learning. As a mother of a little girl, I don't have to choose a school uh, between, like I don't have to choose the school between schools. I can count on the fact that the nearest, the closest school is the best school in the world when we live in Finland. And according to uh, PISA studies, differences between schools in Finland are the second lowest in the world. And that's something we're very proud of here in in Finland. Finnish people see equal access to education as a vital ingredient of our whole nation's success. And I'm proud of all the ex- achievements, like in PISA and all these inno- social in- innovations, like free school meals to everyone since 1948 already, free study materials and, and finance aid, financial aid to students in secondary and higher education. They were all like innovations in their time. And now we in Finland kind of take them for granted. And it's time to come up with new innovations ones that will give more possibilities for learning for every child. There is a growing gap between boys and girls in learning outcomes and their motivation in Finland and in many Western countries. And this is one of the biggest challenges today. How can we make this gap smaller and eliminate it? One of the biggest strengths of Finnish education is our highly educated and motivated teachers, the best in the world. Teachers are in Finland well respected in the society and becoming a teacher is an attractive career choice for our young people. It's also a competitive career. Our faculties of education in our universities can choose among the best applicants. Finnish teachers have a great deal of independence. Like after having this uh, high quality master level education, they have a very strong independence, the pedagogical autonomy in their day to day as schoolwork. Teachers have the freedom to choose the materials they use, the methods they use. They can choose the innovations they use, the new technologies and so on. This allows teachers to use the latest innovations in schoolwork and it allows for teachers to innovate too. They are the ones that do these like 
small and big innovation like every day in our school, in our schools all around the country. Educational innovators agree that schools must change. This is what this like event is about. We discuss how, how fast the world is, rapidly the world is changing and how schools must change as well. And the question is, how? How does this happen? And I'm certain that change in schools is made by the teachers and only by the teachers. In Finland, it's clear that there, there is no reform or no, and no innovation that can be put into use without involving the teachers. And that is why our government has, invent, is, it has invest, invested heavily in teacher training and continued education for teachers. We created, for example, a system of tutor teachers who help their colleagues, like the mentoring, uh, and helping other colleagues in implementing the new curriculum we have and, use, for example, in using new technologies. Our autonomous teachers are the best experts of teaching and our society rely, uh, relies on their professionalism. And it's not my business, for example, as a politician to tell our teachers how to teach. They are the professionals to do that. And we are more like facilitating this uh, so that the schools and teachers can do their job. And for example, as, as like an innovator, there are many people here who do like have invented like new innovations and so. And for an innovation to succeed, you have to convince the teachers that it works. This is something that we must always remember. Uh, looking into the future, education is more important than ever. It's like obvious to say this, but it's. The, it's a fact that it's more important than ever, and to solve the big challenges facing the globe, we need more knowledge, more, more education, we need more research, and we need more cooperation. Unfortunately, the world is in the middle of a global learning crisis, and more than half of the world's school-aged children are not getting basic skills in reading, writing, and mathematics. And this is a great injustice and requires attention from us all. After all, education is the key to improving sustainability, equality and well-being of entire nations. Educational innovations are vital so that these goals can be achieved in the entire world. Working to make education possible for all humanity is our duty as innovators and professionals of education. You have been our guest here in Finland for a couple of days and you've gathered, gathered here to talk about innovations and education, about teaching and learning, about technology and solutions. And it's wonderful to see how 100 has encouraged innovators in education from all parts of the globe to come forward with their ideas. 100 is doing an excellent, excellent job and it's Activities demonstrate love of learning and faith in education as a force for good in this world. And once again, on behalf of the government, thank you very much for coming to Finland and thank you for your contribution to learning of the future. Whilst the Innovation Unit and the Minister both mention teachers as the foundation for co-creating great edtech, Passy Salberg, Finnish educator and author who has worked as a school teacher, teacher educator, researcher and policy advisor in Finland, reminded us to go back to the greats and to listen in to the students as well. Here he is with some gems to consider when we are looking at sustaining positive change in education as we go into 2019. Let's hop, let's pay respect to the past that we have done. The more you innovate, the more you have to turn back and see what has happened before. We have to be able to identify the scholars and, and the words and words of wisdom that people have done before us and left for us to read and, and consider. You have seen some of them there, there are plenty of those things. The problem now is that there's so much crap in, in, when it comes to the literature of, of school education or change or school improvement, it's sometimes difficult to distinguish what is good and what is not. Then the other one is that we need to make room for new ideas. You cannot change the school without you know, taking, if you propose something, the schools or the system should do without taking something away. And that's the, one of the most common problems around the world, is that there are a lot of proposals what the schools or systems should do, but very few people actually say, that, while you do this, you have to throw something away. And that's how it works. It's as simple like this. You, you cannot put any innovation in scale unless 
your innovation of change includes the idea of taking something away. And this is something that will empower principals and others to do these things. And this is exactly my last point here, is to, to make sure that we do this with children. I know that many of the innovations, the 100 innovations this year, and last year as well, include this idea. That we do the change with children, with young people, we listen to them, we give them voice. This is absolutely critical because at the heart of the Saracen's democratic education principle. Again, if we ignore this, if we think that we adults or the system knows what works for kids or young people, it's wrong, it's not going to work. It probably would work somewhere, but it's not going to work at the level of the system. So these are the thoughts I want to leave with you. And one of my favorite things around you know, all of these things is to, to bring play back to schools and the communities. And if you want to read more about that, that's my new book with William Doyle coming out next spring, Let the Children Play, where we conclude many of these similar things. Thank you, people. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful summer. Thank you. With those thoughts to set us off, here is Pia Pakarinen, Deputy Mayor for Education at the City of Helsinki, encouraging us to think about education through an entrepreneurial lens. OK, so I'm delighted uh, towards the end of the last day of 100 Summit to be here with the Deputy Mayor of the City of Helsinki. So welcome. Thank you. Um, please, could to start, could you introduce yourself to our listeners and uh, perhaps give a, a kind of um, overview of what you do day to day here in the City of Helsinki? Well, I'm a deputy mayor for education since uh, last year's June, and I'm a full-time politician. So, uh, actually, I have no background whatsoever in education, uh, apart from that I have been member of uh, you know political uh, uh, decision making in education since uh, 2005. So, I'm a jurist, uh, lawyer myself, and. Uh, have done absolutely another thing, but uh, of course, as a daughter of uh, two teachers, I've <laughs> always been interested in education. Fantastic. And I mean, something as an attendee to this amazing event, um, obviously it's expanded this year mm. into also being um, Helsinki Education Week. Um, and as an outsider looking in, what's amazing is this collaboration between um, 100 Summit and uh, the Helsinki uh, city itself. So um, I just wondered how that came about and also um, what the sort of greater vision is for the mm. city involving uh, and launching the Education Week. Well, yes, uh, actually, SACU contacted, contacted us and, uh, well, uh, it was organized rather quickly uh, and uh, I hope we can expand it, it next year. But it's, or even this year, we managed to have uh, more than 100 20 events organized yes. by our schools. So I, I think that was very nice because they are proud to uh, w uh, to uh, show what they have invented uh, and innovated in their schools. And I, I think this was a great opportunity for them to show it. Yes, it was wonderful. Yesterday we had the, the meal in a, in a school as a surprise here. And um, it, I mean, I think one thing that uh, we just heard from the CEO of Supercell and uh, obviously the, the Minister of Education, um, but the, a real facet of Finnish culture that seems to uh, kind of lead the way in terms of when we've been talking about excellence and equity in education mm. is this idea of trust. Mm. So I just wondered what your own musings were on trust and its role in, in the sort of education success story here as well. Well, I think it's vital to our success story because, uh, well, uh, as I explained in my, my own uh, speech, I, I said that uh, if, if you were to ask me what is the secret of, of Finnish education, it's, of course, that our very well-educated teachers. And since they are very well-educated... And uh, they are selected among the best students because uh, the profession of a teacher is very well uh, appreciated. So we we can pick the best students to become uh, teachers. Then we also think that we can trust them. And uh, it's, it's very important. I think that why the profession of the teacher is so, so uh, much uh, sought for is that it is a possibility to use your creativity. And uh, that's that we have to keep in mind. Absolutely. And then for the for the next six months for you, and 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 so looking at the city of Helsinki through the lens of education, what what's kind of like the big challenge or goal that you'd like to go after in the next sort of six months to a year? 
Well, uh, six months seems to be quite short. I would say that uh, what is a challenge for us is that uh, our strategy is to be the most impactful place for learning. And uh, we want everyone to have the same chances to become whatever they want because of education. And of course, now we have more and more immigrants coming uh, to Finland. And uh, I think excellence and equity Uh, and especially equity uh, can't be restricted to one group. Equity means all. And we have to find out how we could, in the best possible way, to integrate uh, students, pupils coming from very different backgrounds to uh, to be able to enjoy this possibility we have here in Finland. And, I mean, and one thing that I think people here are very um, envious of is your kind of tenure, tenure mm. of the curriculum as well. So that lends mm. a little bit of uh, consistency to sort of planning mm. as, as well. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, one question I always ask my podcast guests is uh, if there are any books or people that have inspired your way of thinking or have, you know, whether it was your prior career or, or this one, um, kind of helped shape your your kind of way of thinking and delivering what you do. Well, uh, previously, before this position, I was uh, director of Helsinki Region Chamber of Commerce. And before that, I was CEO for Helsinki Entrepreneurs. So, of course, I kind of look Uh, at the things and at ed- education from from the business perspective and also from the uh, entrepreneurship uh, perspective uh, most uh, uh, well I, I can say most but many of the students and pupils will uh, later become entrepreneurs and uh, this is also important I, I always want to emphasize that side that uh, it's not only for work as, as uh, employees it's also for entrepreneurship that we should encourage Uh, the the students and pupils to become amazing so hence the creativity and mm. and and having that courage as well mm. can be exactly. quite lonely yeah. amazing um if people want to find out a little bit more about your work and what you're mm. doing and the projects where should they go Well, we have this www.hel. Um, uh, uh, where, where I can be found, and of course um, you can always contact me. Okay, thank you so much, Pia. <laughs> thank you. I was impressed by how close the city of Helsinki and 100 Summit work together, hosting international innovators and opening their schools. One of the key people behind the 100 or so events that took place over the week was Iona Taimela, teacher and educational consultant, and I had the good fortune to speak to her about her work. So I'm delighted to have tracked down uh, Ilona Taimela, who is an education consultant in the city of Helsinki. So welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. She's been absolutely central, if, if I understand correctly, to putting on uh, the Helsinki Education Week, um, which encompasses the 100 Summit, but uh, I think 100 events. Yes. So you've had your work slightly cut out for the last few weeks. Not only a few weeks, <laughs> actually a few months, I would say. Yeah. That, yeah. Um, it's the first time that what we're doing is, is that... Um, We want to engage our our daycare centers, our primary schools and secondary schools and high schools and vocational schools to open up their doors, not only to the 100 um, summit international guests, that, that there are about 200 of them, but also to to each other and, and to the public. And so that we have had, um, um, what would I say, um, we've had, for example, a school open every day for every, anybody to visit that has a greenhouse and they have animals that the, the, the children take care of the animals all the time every day throughout the year so this is now open for everybody else also to visit and come and see their i don't know yeah whether they have like lizards or or um, other other kind of bunnies or whatever that, that they have and, and and they take care of them so we have this kind of a unique school that that one area as kids they go to yeah but no nobody else mm-hmm. so i mean of course we have to open it up for for other people also there's also maker spaces like today there's arabia um comprehensive school is open um and they have a maker space and few studios so these are open for other others as well we have daycare centers that have um, their children they go outside and, and do adventure in the forest throughout all the time so now they've been open and people have been able to go to the forest with the kids to to see their favorite places 
whatever the weather is. I mean, we have a kind of a foggy, foggy, a foggy, fo- foggy. But anyway, they did. They, and, and some of the hundred international guests also did that. And they went outside with them to the forest. So, the, so this is the thing that we have from the daycares. Actually, tomorrow morning, the vocational school is organizing an escape room that they have where you learn English and mathematics at the same time in order to, you know, you have to escape the room to, to solve the problems, mathemat- mathematical problems, and they're in English and so forth. And so that these are for the comprehensive school um, students to go to to the to the escape room tomorrow morning. <laughs> That's a, a very good motivation <laughs> to getting out of the room. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So there's hundreds, maze-esque. hundred events. Mm-hmm. And what I have been doing is, 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 is coordinating the whole thing um, in a way that in the, in the beginning, of course, we, we um, set up um, information and, and advertised and asked people, you know, and schools and teachers and headmasters and so forth to get involved, who wants to. And, and then we've had um, events for them to how to how to organize it and, and to assist yeah. it. And, and now then that people have been registering to these different kind of events. A lot of them, they also call me or email me, even though they actually, they should be doing is e- emailing me. It doesn't maybe. matter how much information <laughs> yeah. you put together on these things. Yeah. People are always like, yeah. but, but I know yeah. you. Yeah, yeah. So, so it's, been a, it's been a blast. <laughs> well, it's really interesting because um, I get this sense from a couple of conversations I've had here that, um, you know, it's well documented that Finland has some incredible um, expertise and uh, projects around learning and it feels like there's now this kind of uh, sort of effort to perhaps externalize or expose some of that so perhaps before mm. you've sort of quietly yeah. maybe in a Finnish way sort of gone about um, doing that um, and now it's okay let's there's a couple of ways how do we um, take this internationally or like you say bring people into what we're doing um, yeah. here in Helsinki and, and, and now especially what we want to do is that like um, the first thing is here is, is so that the, the teachers from different locations are able to go and see what's n- next door, wh- what's over there, so that we want to share among, yes, ourselves mm-hmm. in a way first. But because it's also during the 100 summit that we have a lot of international guests, we are opening up, up for, there's been also international media and and then also the other guests. And, and also we, we, we handpicked about 20 um, 100 international innovators who came already on Sunday and they were in the schools on Monday mm-hmm. and Tuesday doing workshops with our kids and with our teachers. And what an opportunity. And, yeah, and, yeah. and they have been learning together. Yeah. So from our teachers, they also get to, to see and what, how you know their practice and do the workshops together. And not only so that they come and do it on their own, but they do it collaboratively with our teachers and, and, and you, students. And you mentioned before your, your kind of... Um, uh, insight and understanding around the Finnish new Finnish curriculum. So yes. lots of our listeners will be aware there has been a yeah. new Finnish curriculum. Yeah. Uh, so na- our national, yeah, we have a national curriculum, uh, and we have a whole totally like a public school system, so that there is no private schools in Finland. Everything's free. Um, even though, I mean, I work for the municipality of Helsinki. Um, we have city schools but we have also private providers in in Helsinki but they are still public schools they're publicly funded and they're all free and they also have the national curriculum Mm -hmm. so the nationwide we have the same curriculum and it's always made for 10 years so it's a 10 years and and two years ago we started sort of implementing it but two years prior to that so four years ago it came to the schools and to the municipalities to see how we want to implement it and, and design it, so that mm-hmm. so the school the schools and the teachers have been already two years before they start implementing it, designing and thinking that how does it look like like in in our school, and this is the comprehensive um, school curriculum, so from first to to ninth graders, mm-hmm. and um, and and even before sort of before so four years ago before that let's say like, you know, five, six years ago, when it was made, it was written and, and, and w- there was a research, you know, being checked and everything so that it's it's according to the different kind of research. So now we've been implementing it for two years. Um, in about two years time, we start already looking for the next one. What What will be the next 10 years? You know, we started in 2016, 2026 is this curriculum over, but we have to start already thinking about 2000. 
And what, 26 to 36, well, the next 10 years from, in, in, in that sense. Yeah. You know, what's the world like then in, in 2030, in 2036? You know, those kids who are not even born yet, who will be born sometimes, you know, when they are like... Yeah, yeah. Um, and and uh, so we are always looking forward. And the thing is that it's 10 years period where the national curriculum is in, is been implemented. Um the 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 political shifts move they change i mean we have a parliament elections next uh, next spring so most likely the government will change the political shift there will be you know but these politicians they won't be able to during the during their four years of parliament yeah, time or, yeah, or being yeah. in the in the government um they won't be able to sh- change make drastic changes and this is the thing that we've never had a kind of a politically shifting national curriculum and the values and whatever it's, it's always been looked through more like f- f- through um, so research and data for a, you to, know, yeah, for a yeah, period of time yeah. Yeah. And, and now if we look at the, the changes in this particular national curriculum that we have now um, the values that are there for example are um, um, for the first time for example climate change is, is really written there like that it, it's it, it's a, it's a major challenge that it has to be taken. We we talk we talk about this um, um, eco social um, life skill that the, that the children need to need to learn, and and if you think about it, at the moment we're talking about climate change more and more. So we wrote this already in our national curriculum six years ago. Mm-hmm. You know when it was written, and now we've been implementing it for two years. Yeah, yeah. So and, and we will be implementing it for for the next eight years, and definitely, especially this kind of sustainability issues, has to be taken even further um, in the in the next um, curriculum that will come out in 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 twenty twenty six. What else? What we have is is that we have written in in the in the in the core curriculum the kind of. Um, um, guideline that all students and all teachers need to collaborate uh, because learning is collaboratively collaborative effort is is not something individual um, it has to be collabor- collaborative and in the sense that also it has to be interdisciplinary because we can't just look at the world subject from subject lenses. Yeah, yeah. So, um, there's been a lot of m- media coverage in a way that uh, Finland got rid of subjects. No, we still have subjects. But the thing is that there has to be collaboration between the subjects. So the teachers who are subject teachers, they've been maybe teaching on their own. They have to now look at the world's kind of what we say, you know, the wicked problems that mm-hmm. we have that are interdisciplinary. Absolutely. They have to be collaboratively looking at so that we're, le- we're, we're, we're teaching the the student to understand the world holistically and so the consultation now on the next curriculum mm. what are the kind of key things coming out of that or what are the the focus areas do you think um well maybe too early to say i mean it, it, it's 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 still you know that will be like a big 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 uh, process but now at the moment there's a lot more on this um on this um kind of uh social emotional skills mm-hmm. as well i mean what what we are really looking f- more is is the skills it's the skills that that the students need in a changing world because the world is not the same anymore in 2030 2040 or 2050 um what is now or what we've ever known like in, in our childhood yeah yeah so um so um that's something that they need to be learning much much more than than just the content you know we we don't measure measure the kind of uh, children's capability or understanding or or in 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 what content and you know how how there are still I and mean, we we haven't gotten rid of the assessment but at the moment um, we have um what we have is that we have a national board of education that sets up these curriculums so we we don't do it in the municipality we get them prior and then we design how we want to have it in in our mm-hmm. city and so forth uh, and in the schools but um now at the moment is the big thing is the assessment how do we assess um the students in this kind of um what we call is the phenomenon based learning um phenomenon based learning is 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 a process is a multidisciplinary process and the assessment has to be continuous and the students, when they get into this kind of a phenomenon-based um, learning 
um, sessions or or inquiry, um, they have to have the the goals really visual and understanding that these are the goals where where I'm going to, and then I then then the students think that okay, what do I know already about this? Because everybody's individual in that sense, so mm-hmm. we personalize it, and uh, what do I know about it already, and then what do I want to know. And then the questions are out there. What do I want to know? And we can see that okay, next door, you know, I mean, or or sitting beside you or in in front of you, um, there's actually a person who already knows this. Mm-hmm. We don't look, we, you know, if, if because we see that okay, some 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 have different experiences, some have different knowledges, so the expertise can be already there within the students, and then then they share that knowledge. We don't need to look further. We don't need to make an inquiry or project, whatever, out of it, because if the if the knowledge is already there, isn't it? So that's first. Then, we, if we don't have the knowledge within the setting that we're we, whatever group we are, then then we think, okay, where else can we look for the knowledge? Is it in the books? I mean, we we still have books. <laughs> um, is it in the library next door library? There's a lot of. Um, Uh, excellent libraries in 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 Helsing that we we collaborate with the libraries, and we can tell them that you know we want to have these and these kind of li- uh, books, and they search for the books and then they bring them or or, or they, they they can be fetched to the schools. Um, is it is is there an expert maybe in the parents? Let's invite the parents, or the parent can invite this whole classroom to to their to place. Their work, that's amazing. And um, or is is there an NGO or a firm or whatever? Is it, a, is it is it is the knowledge more in, in the museum? Then they go and visit museums. So that's a process that they they look for for the sort of the answers to these questions that they want to know about the phenomenon more and what's needed to to go deeper understanding. And it's a process, and it, 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 it's kind of the the skills that they learn during that time. And, and there can be a Skype uh, phone even to to Uganda or wherever you know if, if, if that's where they think like that the answer would be and, and there's more knowledge so it doesn't really matter where it is but we the, the children need to learn the skills how to find out and the teacher can say that I don't know the answer let's find out together yeah yeah and what do you think are the challenges for sort of Finnish education at the moment Yeah. So the biggest challenge, like I said, is the assessment, obviously, because it's changing so much. That how do you assess throughout, and what's the what's the meaning of assessment? What is the meaning? Assessment should be an encouragement for the student to go further. That should be the meaning of assessment. That is encourages me, and gives me more knowledge about where I am and where should I go. Mm-hmm. So the goals are there and then I said okay this is this is kind of the point where I am. So it has to be continuous. It's not a summative only at the end. That this is like a test. I test you now that do you know how how do you measure how do you test skills? So it has to be continuous and this is of course if if we think about the the challenge is there that we need to be ongoingly also I mean continuously Um, having teacher training, professional yeah. training, and and that's what we have. What what we've done differently in the city of Helsinki compared to some other municipalities in Finland is that we have about sixty or numbers, something sixty seventy expert teachers in the schools, in daycare, in in a comprehensive system in high school, and these are who we know how, who are already doing it. They already are in the four, you know, forerunners sort of. So, mm-hmm. so what we give them as as a city of Helsinki, we give them um, a set of hours per week. Let's say, I mean, it's about eight to four hours per week, depending on the on the individual. And um, so they have this amount of time to go to different other schools, or to have a, to organize kind of a seminar or a one day. Training, That's amazing. Um, or they, what they've been doing also is hackathons, so that they 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 have um, eight to four hours a week. Yeah, That's amazing. Yeah, so these sixty sixty seventy teachers they they yeah. get to share to the hundreds. So the hundreds and come. So they don't and that's have how to do it on Twitter in their own time. No, no, no. they do their own job still, mm. but then they are 
they are able to be away from there so that they're mm. able to have a substitute for those hours or that, that they don't have hours at, at, at all to teach during 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 those time yeah yeah i can hear all the teachers listening and going ah, that's what yeah, I mean. yeah 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 amazing so that's what we have and then we have uh and that's that's the professional development ongoing because it has to be happening all the time mm-hmm. it's not like okay at one, once uh, you know <laughs> yeah. once a year or two t- twice a year um so that's happening all the time every week all the t- um all around the city and another thing is that we've we've picked um it's about 60 schools we have um 100 plus um 100 and 100 comprehensive schools but then we also have the high schools about uh, is it i can't remember 20, 20 or so so but we have um about half of them are already kind of um experiencing a little bit more that we give more resources to so is that the kind of piloting and, and trialing mm. different things? I think I've heard Definitely, that. Yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. What we call is the in, in no, like innovative innovative schools. Yes, yes. In is no it schools. Nicholas lead, leading that? A chap called Nicholas? No. Uh, there's Nicholas. Um, uh, in, we have them on the Swedish side because okay. we have Swedish as well. Yeah. They're both, I mean, we collaborate everybody together. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then, I mean, you, you don't want to be thinking about next year already, but next year... Mm. Um, what are your? What would you love to see uh, Helsinki Education Week uh, do then? I mean, <laughs> what are your plans? Can you already imagine how you would do more? Or? Yeah, I mean, obviously, um, I've already had headmasters and, and, and daycare centre leaders coming to me. Ah, oh, next year we want to be. So I'm just like in, in panic, like what a hundred now? So next year it will be like two hundred, mm. or we'll be five hundred, but. No, no, there's no panic. Yeah. Just kidding. Um, the thing is that what I want to see more and what was actually the gems this year were exactly those events where the children were leading the workshops and it was the children who could go and participate in a different mm-hmm. school. Because there was a lot of like open doors for, for parents or for for international guests or whatever um, or other teachers to, to, to go. But I think we, the thing is... What's really important is that when the students move from their own school and their own learning environments that they've sort of are more, you know, used to. Yeah. And yeah. they go to another location and work with other students and other teachers. And that's where that that's I think is the gem because that's when they learn the most and then bring they can back. bring it back. And so that's um, what I want to encourage. Okay, so next year. And what about next week? <laughs> next week. Do you get week? to relax next week? Do you get to... Um, well, next week um, on, on Monday um, is the me- the media sort of... Um, we need to put out the, the numbers, the how many how many participants and everything we had. Um, one, one of the things that was already um, amazing is, is one of our expert teachers... Um, said that okay, you know he can he can do a workshop on on augmented reality for students, and so he was thinking like okay, small workshop and blah blah blah, you know, on a Tuesday, and it was like oh my god, oh my god, there's more than 120 students coming, and it ended up being 180. Wow! Last last Tuesday, imagine one teacher with 180 students learning augmented reality, yeah. and it went beautifully. Um, well, he had different time slots, but anyway, ongoing, the whole day. Um, another thing that, that was really a, a success story, you know, we want to make these stories out there for the media as well. So one uh, success story was um, we have this, uh, we, we want the, I mean, the students to to do exercise and move, you know, movements yeah. and so forth. Yeah. And uh, so um, we have this... Um, organization that we collaborate with and and they said okay we don't want to just like you know make an event where the students come so we put out our our contact info on the website and the schools can schools can you know contact us if they want something that we can come and do whatever um so they put put that that out what do you know what happened exactly so the whole week was fully booked in few hours. Yeah, and then they started selling, like, well, selling, um, booking next week, next month, and now they're already booking January. 
Wow, that's amazing. So it's just, it's like, uh, you it's know. exposing these. It, it, exactly. And also there's obviously a massive appetite for it. Yeah, yeah. 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 So the schools, you know, took it and, yeah, I want to contact you. And then, then they said, okay, okay, fine, we can do it. And they just kept on doing it. And then they're saying, like, now, now we're booking January. And which organization was that? It's Liik- Liikkuva Koulu. Okay. Which is a, which, which is a, which is a, well, moving school. Okay. Like a yeah. move. So it's, it's um Um, it can be PE, but different kinds of like, you know, it's something that they wouldn't do normally. Yeah, yeah. And um, the, the the sort of 70 teachers that you mentioned, your lead teachers, yeah. are those like listed somewhere? Can people kind of find out who yeah, they are? Yeah, yeah, yeah. In 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 uh, internally in in the sc- okay. in, in the city in the yes. city yeah, yeah. so not for external consumption <laughs> yeah, yeah I used to be one I uh, used to be yeah. I used to be on the phenomenon based learning expert teacher and the teacher the the team leader okay. before becoming then uh, educational During consultant <laughs> that lifetime yeah. what was your best like what was your best memory of that time like was there a particular phenomenon based learning project or something which mm. made you think yeah that's just absolutely fantastic. Um, I think well, well, it's really going to to other schools and being able to share what you do in your own practice, mm-hmm. and uh, and um, sort of uh, giving them giving them hints and and, and sort of direction because yeah. the, the thing is that what we don't do is we don't say that you know do exactly like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's not the way. It doesn't work. No. Yeah. So what we what we share and we have a discussions more 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 and then what we did actually last year and they're still developing them um with the team and we have a, some project money also now for it is that we made these kind of a playing cards for the phenomenon based learning. So the card is it's a card uh, deck. Yeah. And uh, the cards sort of um, then guide the teacher towards the kind of a phenomenon-based learning process. Yeah, yeah. So it starts with um, with a card, obviously, choosing how do you choose the phenomena, okay? And, and and sort of and there's guiding questions only in the cards. Yeah. And then there is um then then there is kind of um mm, how do you check that it's authentic and and uh, sort of. Uh, Uh, important that it's, it's, it's also curriculum based. Um, um, there's a liaison to the curriculum and objectives and so forth, and then then it goes on. So it, it says, okay, how do you how do you go about it with the students? How do you um, how do you get them motivated? So it can be a story, a movie. It can be a visit to the to the museum. How do you start it? How do you initiate the The kind of an interest yeah. that this is the phenomenon that we're going to be studying for the next six weeks or something, right? So how do you do it? And and, and it can be really whatever. And then comes these kind of questions that what do they know already about it? How do you do that? How do you, how do you get the students um, information that what they know about it already? And what are then the, their questions? What are the questions that they want to know? And then it goes on. How do you do the inquiry? Where the knowledge is and so forth? Where do you go? Do you go again maybe to the museum that you went first time? Do you go now now there with your questions? Because it will be a different visit. And if, if people are and listening how, in and yeah. they like these cards, <laughs> can they get them? Um, they're not, well, they're not yet in, in English. Yeah. Um, we're now being um, translating them into Swedish. And... Uh, It's uh, it, it it there is a, like I said we have project money so we, we're going to be doing this and, and they're still under development mm-hmm. so hopefully next year 2019 we will actually have them so that they because the next level what we're thinking is now is putting a QR code maybe for the on the card so then you go and you can get into a video yeah 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 so that we are making videos now so that actually shows that part of the process yeah yeah. So that there can be a di- a di- so that there's all it can be a card sort of laid on the table. I'm just thinking as a parent as well. Yeah, be quite useful. You know, at the weekend exactly. When you're like, yeah. Uh, oh, where should we go? What should we yeah, do? Yeah. And also helping to without it being like just you know yeah. deathly boring, but like making it educational as well. So yeah. ask yeah, priming those questions and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So maybe that will be a hundred two thousand. Ne- you know, nineteen ne- yeah, a new, English, new, English. new, new innovation. <laughs> And just finally, so who are some of the people, uh, books, or you know, uh, whether it's a podcast or a book mm. or a person that's inspired you or continues to inspire your way of thinking about all of this? Hmm. <laughs> Actually, um, 
somebody that I've been reading um, lately. Um, I used to I used to live in France. Also, mm-hmm. in the, I went to l'Université catholique d'Angers uh, <laughs> in French, en français. And um, I've been reading. I've been really going back to Jean Jacques Rousseau. Okay. Uh, Emily, ou l'éducation. Okay. Yeah. Right. And, uh, and it's about phenomenon based learning. If you if you read it. So we are not really creating anything new. Yeah. In yeah, the way yeah. we might we might be or we we are. But we are also taking it from from early, you know, from those times yeah, yeah. when education was really being also thought of more philosophically and how what, what it is, you know, John Dewey's inquiry and sort of learning by doing us and these kind of things. Which is they, kind of they like don't go away. This morning, yeah, yeah, exactly. About going, you know, reminding yeah. yourself of the big ideas exactly. that were out there already. Exactly. Yeah. 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 So when when you know when everybody's saying that you know Finland is is the best and so forth, what we are best at, we're best at learning, mm-hmm. not in teaching, in learning. We want to be best in learning, learning from others, learning from the past, learning from you know whoever. There was somebody also who said that um, what do you do with the violence with the migrant students? You know because there's a migrant migration um, kind of. Um, Challenging, of of course, also Europe and um, Finland, maybe a little bit less mm-hmm. because we are up here. Um, and there was kind of a um, question that what do you do with the violent that the migrant children bring? And I said, well, how, why do you say it like that? Like that? Um, we don't think it that way at all. I mean, uh, violence can be said by anybody, <laughs> but it doesn't look at, you know, wh- mm-hmm. what your background is. And um, I remember in 1990s when um, when we had this maybe uh, more, for example, Somalis came and there might have been a few incidences only that. And um, what we learned from, do you know what is a kind of a violent city in the USA? Oh, well, I guess uh, the outskirts of Washington or New York in the 80s, but I don't mm, know about Chicago. Now. Chicago now, yeah. Of course, we went, yeah, to, we went to, yeah. So so there was a person from Chicago who came and um, and said, you know, what they've been doing about s- suburbs and, and these kind of violent areas. It was a cultural respect. Mm-hmm. So we took it and ran with it. So what we have is, is also also in our core curriculum mm-hmm. is the respect for for everybody for children and listening every human being wants to be heard and nurtured mm-hmm. and looked after and when you do that in the school all the time with everybody there is no violence so what we had last uh, yesterday morning we had the hundred uh, visitors go to 15 different locations and one of them was the most Mm. Kind of, you know, you, what, what would you say, like, you know, in the east mm-hmm. suburbs of Helsinki, um, maybe low income, you know, houses and so forth. And and we take our international guests there mm-hmm. because they're doing a fantastic job in uh, language awareness. They have 40 something languages there and um, so, sort of this kind of... Um, Um, intercultural awareness and sensitivity towards each other and the cultural respect. Mm-hmm. So we are able to have all schools in, in Helsinki and all schools in Finland totally open for every, anybody to go and visit. And we know that they are good school. Mm-hmm. And, and when I was in Moscow, for example, just recently also talking, um, they, you know, the, this is the thing that there's too many countries in the world that have private education And they select their students and they all only want to have the best education in those particular schools. What about the rest? So we think of, of everybody. It's the same education for everybody. And th- the education is good in every school. So the, is there is there like a kind of grammar school type system here at all in some of the schools? Like that idea of selection or... Mm, Cause like, cause I was there, like, there is a... Yeah. There is a Some schools are able to have some um, uh, classes that have um, more, for example, um, that they that they have more mathematics in their in their timetable or more science in their okay, timetable so or more arts. Yeah, yeah they're specialized classes. Yeah. Uh, they have music or sports or you know these kind of things, and those are the only ones that then they they kind of select. 
the yeah, students. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah. And the, but but um, it's it's a, uh, and also in a way that we have those in every area, because the thing is that um, the students in 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 the music municipality they go to that school which is their nearest closest mm -hmm. school, and then so in every school around the city they can have different kind of schools that have you know for yeah. example maybe science there and mathematics there and and sports and so forth yeah yeah it's, it's, it's amazing to hear all your different stories <laughs> yeah but also i mean i mean the attitude towards uh, towards the the students yes if it's a right respect well, it, it doesn't take any money it's it, an attitude that's that's absolutely <laughs> true um and not just saying that it's a problem child that mm. phrase is yeah, problematic exactly. in itself exactly think, so. exactly Yeah. Uh, really fascinating to talk to you. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for having me. <laughs> yeah. And uh, enjoy your weekend and some time off. <laughs> Thanks. That's all for this week. Next week, come back to hear from projects selected by 100 as global innovators. You can also catch Pia Pakarenen, Deputy Mayor for Education Helsinki, in person at Learn It in January if you happen to be in London. I'll be there variously moderating, emceeing the Educate Awards and listening in to what's new in 2019. We've also got a new podcast series hitting the feed in 2019, so make sure you subscribe to catch all seven episodes. Thanks for listening. Bye-bye.